Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our fabulous high tea honoring the great women of Northeast Pennsylvania 2011. I'm Helen Lavelle of Lavelle Strategy Group, a proud recipient of the 2010 Great Woman Award. And I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, Lori Myers. Thank you for that little applause. I am so delighted to be here to once again praise Impressions Media for your foresight in recognizing and honoring the great women of our community. And on behalf of Impressions Media and the Times Leader, I'd like to thank everyone here for joining us. Heartfelt thanks as well to these wonderful women who have contributed so greatly to improving all of our lives. Congratulations, ladies. Our appreciation also extends to our wonderful sponsors who recognize the importance of this event and for making the region aware of the needs of our community and the ways they are being met. Our sponsors include Clearbrook Treatment Centers, Community Medical Center, Northeast Radiation Oncology Center, and ERA One Source Realty, which is owned by Sunita Aurora, also a recipient of a 2010 Great Woman of Northeastern Pennsylvania Award. I'd also like to point out that Ruth Corcoran, Ruth, I don't know where you are, but please wave. Ruth Corcoran of the Cork Restaurant in Wilkesbury contributed gift certificates to our honorees and also created today's signature cocktail, The Impression. If you haven't tried one, please do so because my understanding is that it's very delightful. And also, I'd really like to extend a special thank you to Sugar Plum Chocolates for donating the beautiful and edible centerpieces on each one of your tables. Thank you, Fran. So be sure, be sure not be sure to take one of those with you as you leave. And a very special thank you goes to the amazing musicians once again as they are leaving our beautiful tent who so kindly volunteered their time and talent to provide such soothing and enjoyable entertainment. Thank you very much, guys. And to Digital Memories, who, is, to, who are ensuring that all of your stories are being captured and forever, forever documenting this event. Doug, Eddie, thank you very much, and Jean, we really appreciate it. We're also grateful to all of the companies who were kind enough to donate prizes, and there are some beautiful gifts for each one of our honorees. But that list can be seen on your screen. And please remember who they are. This is the advertising woman coming out of me. And please support them because they have truly supported all of us. Thank you very much. The companies who have chosen to purchase a table, I also want to thank each one of you individually and note that they are listed as well. Because an event such as this does not just happen. It takes help and hard work from a lot of people. Like, this is really important. Look at the group of women you see on the screen, our gracious volunteers. There were women in the community, in both Lackawanna and Luzerne County, who called on us to let us know how important they thought this event was. And I know that a lot of people in this room know who a lot of those women are. And they volunteered to assist to get the attendance that we need today, so we thank them. And of course, thank you to Glenn Mara for helping to make our high tea so high quality. Ladies and gentlemen, your tables are set with a delicious array of savory sandwiches and desserts, so please feel free to begin dining while our program progresses. We are here today to recognize the great leaders of our community. One of those leaders is Impressions Media, a multimedia, multi-platform company that offers award-winning traditional and new media solutions that keep our community informed, interested, and keep us connected to the world. Impressions Media publishes The Times Leader, Weekender, The Abington Journal, Go Lackawanna, The Sunday Dispatch, The Dallas Post, and Bazaar. Impressions Media also provides website development, mobile marketing, and social media consulting. Formerly known as the wilkes -Barre Publishing Company, this is a company that has been an integral and very important part of Northeast Pennsylvania for more than a century. 
Over those years, the company has fulfilled many requests for sponsorships and donations to support community organizations and nonprofit groups. And today, more than ever, not only continues that support, but continues its powerful impact on the community by piling on the excellence in reporting local and world news, sports, and entertainment. They dominate online, on your iPad, and on your phone. They also happen to employ many women, and women in leadership positions. They understand that it is the women of our community, like the ones we honor today, who give of themselves generously and selflessly to aid the disadvantaged, the disabled, the needy, the ill, the forgotten, and the heroic. So please join me in thanking Impressions Media's president, Prashant Shatu. Prashant, you must stand up. <laughs> Thanks, Prashant. And thank you as well to another man who appreciates strong and dynamic women, the owner of Impressions Media, and also one of my favorite people in the world, Richard Connor. Thank you, Rich. Rich Connor was born and bred a newspaper man. Curious about his surroundings since a child and an avid reader, he turned his talents into powerful writing and then joined those with his business prowess to build a multi-platform media company. Mr. Connor serves as the CEO, editor, and publisher of Impressions Media, as well as Maine Today Media, headquartered in Portland. And we could not be more fortunate to have him here because his immersion in local business is a natural segue to his commitment and devotion to this community. Like all of the women sitting up front today, Rich Connor is a person you go to if you want something done and done right. Let's have a very warm welcome for Richard Connor. Thanks, Helen. Um, welcome, everyone. I don't know about you, but it feels to me like it's uh, not September, almost October, but August. The uh, I'd really like to shed my coat, but I won't. The uh, <clears throat> one reason I'm too fat. Um, yeah, I am. Um, we have some former uh, awardees, recipients of this award, who are here. Today, Helen is one of them. Ruth Corcoran was mentioned earlier. I'd like them all to stand and get a round of applause. Sunita Aurora was mentioned earlier. She's a, a former winner. And Lisa DeNaples. Can we give them all a round of applause? Well, our, our company really, to me, is still the Times leader. It's the one that I came to in 1978. I, I saw some uh, some friends from back in those days, Pat Rosenthal and Sherry Ponick, people that I knew back then. We had children the same age. I have an 11-year-old now, so uh, I feel like I'm just keep coming around here, uh, one way or the other. But uh, get young, new, vibrant people into new media at the Times Leader, and so they wanted a new name of the company. But for me, it's the Times Leader, and I welcome you. On behalf of the, the old times leader and the new times leader, in this day and age of the media business, you have to do a lot of things a lot of different ways, and uh, that's why we changed our name. But it's the times leader. I want to welcome and, and recognize uh, someone uh, that I met when I first came back here, which would have been six or seven years ago. I left for a while, bought the newspapers, and he's just been a great friend. Uh, I'm not on his campaign staff. He has been a great mayor, in my opinion. I've seen most of them since 1978. He was out working during the flood two weeks ago. I saw him on TV. I saw him everywhere. Tom Layton. Tom, could we give you a round of applause? And he's, he's with, a, with, a, uh, with a great woman, very proud of her son, his mother, Nancy. I can't remember, I'm not certain why Tom's here. I tell you, he's here because his cousin is getting a award. I think he's running for re-election, not certain. The, uh, um, he'll be at the door on the way out, uh, shaking hands. The, uh, we, we do this in other events because we're in a unique position to do this. We can publicize 
the good things that you do and the good people who are in this room. If we didn't have a newspaper, we didn't have a website and all those other things and an iPad app, we couldn't do it. So we're involved in events like this and our, our staff, by the way, they don't get paid extra for putting these on. They come in and volunteer, do a great job, but it's because we think that uh, we should give something back to the community in a very visible way. We take money out of the community, we live here, we live off the people that buy our papers and who advertise with us, and it's a chance for us to give back. That's why we're here, and it's really our honor to be able to recognize, particularly the people who work in the nonprofit sector, who right now with unemployment at record levels, and now the devastation of the most recent flood, are needed more than ever, and it's just really our honor to be able to recognize them today. We will get on with the program. <clears throat> I want to uh, beg your indulgence and thank you for being patient when we, uh, when we postponed this event. We uh, thought, I can tell you that our volunteers and Helen Lavelle, who's worked, been working on this with her company, um, said, you know, the best thing we could do was, is to show that we've had the flood, this would have been the Tuesday after. And this is a town and a community cities in this community that fight back, come right back, cannot be kept down, and I said, I just don't think it's the right time, no. And then I got another email, and then I got a phone call, and then, you know, I finally, I think on a Saturday night said, what don't you understand about no? Um, we were putting the tent up at the time, so, but I, we just really, we, did, we just didn't think it was the right time, so I appreciate your coming today and uh, changing your schedules when you should have been here two weeks ago. I want to explain the format for today's ceremony. We'll announce your name, and as we do, we want the honorees to begin to walk up to the stage. My left, your right. You'll stand here, you'll be embarrassed. Your family will love it and smile. We'll give you an award. You'll get your photograph taken. And while you're coming up here, we will be telling, we'll be showing things about you and your bio on the screens. Helen will be reading a little bit about each honoree. And what I like to say is this. <clears throat> if it's about you and your family's here and they're talking about all the great things you've done, it'll be too short. If you're not related <clears throat> and you're feeling a little muggy and you want to get home, it'll be a little long. Um, <laughs> There will be complete bios of everybody found in our newspaper, uh, actually on October 2nd and October 5th. When you leave here today, you will get a copy of those sections, so you get a, you'll get a preview of them. And uh, there is really more of a full story about how, what all these, uh, all these honorees and worthy people, what they've done and what they continue to do. So you come up to my left, um, we will uh, take your photograph and then we'll go on to the next honoree. I'd like to tell you now, please stay behind so we can get a group shot over there. It'll look like a wedding in that gazebo, but um, uh, we'd like you to stay around so we could do that. Our first honoree is Gloria Adnesio Blandino. Following a difficult battle with cancer, Gloria has directed her focus on providing free health care to our community. Currently, she devotes at least 50 hours per week to ensuring quality care for patients as director of the Care and Concern Free Health Clinic in Pittston. She has been a volunteer with many organizations, presently giving of her time and talent to her church and as coordinator of the Master Leadership Program. Gloria is also working on bringing to our area an educational program about how the Italian people hid many Jewish people during the Holocaust, a part of history unknown to many. Gloria Adnizio Blandina. Our next honoree is Jean Bovard. Jean Bovard. As executive director of the Scranton Area Foundation, Jean artfully ensures that funds from this community charity meet a wide variety of educational, cultural, and human service needs throughout Lackawanna County. In addition to serving the community in her career, 
Jean has been serving as a volunteer since she graduated from college. Her love for the community led her to serve on several educational, health care, and planning committees over the years. In fact, the University of Scranton Board appreciated her service so much, they awarded her with an honorary degree. Ladies and gentlemen, Jean Bovar. Our next honoree, Denise Vitali Burney. Denise Vitali Burney. Not only is Denise president of Matt Burney Honda, a family owned business in Scranton, she is an avid and nationally recognized suicide prevention and inpatient safety advocate. Denise established the nonprofit organization Break the Silence in response to her brother Matthew's death. Key to her mission is her desire to talk more openly about suicide. Her efforts are currently directed at improving licensing at mental health facilities. Denise also serves on the board of Marley's Mission, a nonprofit you will hear more about later, and recently donated land, aptly named Matt Bernie Acres. So the Equine Therapy Group has a new and very spacious home. Ladies and gentlemen, Denise Vitali Bernie. Next honoree, Anna, Anna Shervenak. <laughs> I knew I was going to blow that one. The, uh, there's, a phonetic, there's a phonetic pronunciation up here, but I'm just psychologically opposed to following a script. Anna Shervenak. Shervenak. Anna's commitment to community service knows no bounds. Over the years, she has served on boards for causes ranging from economic development to health care to domestic violence, to name a few. And just like Sally Field and Norma Ray, she helped launch the Save the Best campaign to keep the jobs at the Toby Hanna Army Depot. A greater Wilkes-Barre Chamber of Commerce ambassador and board member emeritus, she champions the achievements of local women and promotes the URU program to build self-esteem in high school girls. Anna Servanak. And if I try one more time, I'll blow it again, so the uh, apologize. Thank you. Next person, honoree, is well known to everybody here. Television personality, been in the market a long time, and wonderful at her job and in the community, Debbie Dunlavy. Debbie Dunlavy. Best known as a television right. news anchor, Debbie's very visible position, as well as her heart, put her in the fundraising limelight for many community groups. Debbie created an Emmy award-winning special for the American Cancer Society and for many years hosted the Montage Cancer Survivor Celebration as well as the three-day, 24-hour Easter Seals Telethon. A motivational speaker and a marketing whiz, Debbie continues to be the face of community service. Look for her soon as she adds her talent to Northeast Radiation Oncology Center's fight against cancer. Debbie Dunlavy. The next face and person you're about to see you'll recognize as well, who is an honoree, Sister Mary Alice Jacquinot. Sister Mary Alice Jacquinot. At the helm of St. Joseph's Center, Caring for children with developmental disabilities, Sister Mary Alice oversees 500 full and part-time employees. She is responsible for the daily welfare of the center's 160 residents, as well as the hundreds of others served through community-based programs. Sister Mary Alice took her vows with the Sisters Servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in 1997. Since then, her vows have taken her down the halls of Marion Community Hospital to the board of EOTC, to Marywood University, where she served as outreach director. Then to a leadership role at Friends of the Poor and on to her current position as CEO of St. Joseph Center. Her inspiring spirit continues to grow as Sister Mary Alice continues to serve. Sister Mary Alice Jackman.
Mayor, it's the last time I'm mentioning it today, but this is that's the mayor's cousin. <laughs> Keep you on the straight and narrow. <laughs> I got it right there. It's it. You don't have a prayer. Quit, look, quit looking at. That was it. Was meant to be a pun. Quit looking at your BlackBerry. The. Um, <laughs> Our next honoree, April Leposki. April Leposki. April's vision to help child abuse victims was born from helping her own daughter through a brutal attack. Her vision blossomed into the establishment of Marley's Mission. Effectively using the healing nature of horses, this nonprofit provides free therapy to children who have experienced significant trauma in their young lives. Since Marley's mission opened last year with seven horses and two miniature horses, it has helped more than 70 children from five counties. April had no previous experience working with horses, but with the help of friends, family, and volunteers, Marley's mission has become a respected and well-known organization within the community and across the nation. In fact, Marley's mission was just named the best new charity in the country by a social fundraising platform for nonprofits. Congratulations, April. Sandra Myers. Sandra Myers, Senior Fellow for International Civic and Cultural Projects at the University of Scranton. Sandra literally wrote the book on integrating culture into public policy in the United States. In fact, Sandra has written several books and handbooks on democracy and interdependence. She is devoted to strengthening the culture of democracy worldwide and has presented programs on democracy in Prague, Krakow, Budapest, Buenos Aires, Johannesburg, Kigali, Nairobi, and cities throughout the entire United States. Here at home, Sandra co-founded Interdependence Day and serves as director of the Schemmel Forum, a not-for-credit continuing education for enrichment program at the University of Scranton. Congratulations. Gina and her sister Jacqueline turned their grief into something positive. They founded Fallen Officers Remembered, honoring those we have lost and protecting those who still serve. With her family's help, she organized fundraiser after fundraiser, collecting more than $150,000 to purchase bulletproof vests for our men and women in blue in Luzerne and Lackawanna counties. Continually inspired by the bravery and memory of her brother, Gina hopes to take fallen officers remembered national to honor and help police officers all over the United States. Thank you, Gina. If you have any connection at all to the Chamber of Commerce in Wilkesbury, you get emails from this woman all the time. You see her name more than you see your own. Um, <clears throat> Donna Cedar. Donna Cedar. Not only has Donna been serving the business community through her many roles at the Greater Wilkesbury Chamber of Commerce, where she currently serves as Vice President, she has also held numerous volunteer positions. The list of organizations touched by Donna's helping hands include Circle 200, an organization for women executives throughout Northeastern Pennsylvania. The Wilkes-Barre Rotary Club, where she serves as president. International Association of Business Communicators, Osterhout Free Library, Junior Achievement, Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week, Chamber of Commerce Service Organization, and American Chamber of Commerce Executives. Congratulations, Donna. Our next recipient, Karen Thomas. Karen Thomas, Senior Vice President of Marketing at Penn Security Bank. Karen is deeply involved in economic development initiatives. She is best known for getting the Dress for Success program up and running in Lackawanna County. A member of the board for eight years, she has helped plan the group's annual luncheon and fashion show, raising lots of much needed funds to provide appropriate clothing for disadvantaged women re-entering the workforce. Karen is also on the board of the Scranton Cultural Center 
and of Lordsmont, a nonprofit close to her heart because of its service to underprivileged children. You might want to talk to Karen about the dream vacation to Australia she's planning for the organization. Congratulations, Karen. The next honoree is Wendy Wilson. Wendy Wilson. After running her own public relations consulting firm, Wendy assumed the role of Vice President of Marketing, Communications, and External Affairs at Community Medical Center. Her department oversees the free educational classes and healthcare programs offered to our community as well as the hospital's many philanthropic efforts. An advocate of the local arts community, Wendy is a founding member of the Lackawanna Council on Arts, Culture, and Education. And in that role, she has been instrumental in establishing cultural events and programs for the community, including First Night and V-Day Scranton. She also volunteers for the region's local PBS and PR station, WVIA. Congratulations to Wendy Wilson. Cool. Our final honoree this afternoon is Linda Zaneski. Linda Zaneski. As Deputy Nurse Executive at the Veterans Hospital in Wilkesbury, Linda is second in command putting her leadership skills to work overseeing all the nurses and outpatient clinics. She was the first female elected to council in Edwardsville and the first female council president. Currently, she's devoting her efforts to revitalizing Main Street in Edwardsville where significant improvements have begun. She is actively involved in the American Legion Auxiliary, the Lions Club, and is an advisor to the Leo Club where she encourages youth to volunteer every month in different areas of the valley. A former Miss Pennsylvania, Linda also coaches young women on how to win scholarships in the pageant world. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you very much.